Hey, I uh, haven't really posted much for a little while here because I haven't had much time to be working on things, but I have had a little time here and there and I've gotten quite a bit of small things uh, uh, taken care of on the machine. I just wanted to document some of it with a video. Uh, the first thing is I know I've put up some pictures of the uh, upper control panel here uh, in the past, but I've never really explained the, uh, the function. On my machine, you turn the mains on with the green switch right there, red is off, green is on, and then there's an extra emergency switch down there. But once the mains are on, everything then is functions from up here. This first section is the chip auger. Uh, I built the chip auger and put in the machine, and uh, if I put the switch down, uh, the chip auger runs uh, intermittently. Because of this, it's called a flip-flop timer and the top dial determines how long it stays on, the bottom dial determines how long it stays off, and so I can adjust that. Uh, I have found that running a job, uh, even if it's not making heavy chips, uh, I don't need it to run constantly, but I do want it to spin every once in a while because I've discovered that uh, the uh, coolant drains out through the bottom of that auger, and those holes aren't that big. I can't remember. I think they're 330 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and those things will kind of plug up with swarf and so if I just spin that auger every I think right now it spins about every 30 minutes it spins for a minute or so uh, that will just keep that bottom of that tube cleared out and let the coolant drain uh, if I switch this in the middle there's nothing happening if I push it up um, the chip auger just runs constantly after a job is over I, uh, I have a wash down hose, I'll explain that a little bit uh, in a minute, and um, uh, reverse, if there's a little jam up, if it gets stuck, I can reverse it and it'll clear the jam, and so that's the auger. Uh, this switch is not hooked up to anything, but I have plans in the future. This turns the PC on, emergency switch of course, lights inside the enclosure right there, and then this is the coolant. Um, the coolant in the center position is off, I'm running dry no matter what's going on, I'm dry. If I push it down, now the coolant is controlled uh, by the M8 command, M9, in the G-code. So you're running, it you stops for a tool change, coolant shuts off, you pop in a new tool, hit the startup button, and coolant comes back on, it keeps running. Uh, if I am cleaning up, I push it up. Now, even with the machine off and everything, as long as the mains are on, uh, I've got a steady flow of coolant. Okay, what I've done is, uh, as you can see, I've got uh, a hose bib and a little short, I think that's a six-foot section of garden hose and, of course, a uh, spray nozzle at the end. What this does is, uh, let me get down here, this is plumbed via copper pipe. I, I ran all the coolant via copper pipe, now kind of permanent. All goes back, feeds into um, that big blue tank is the reservoir. That's about... I, I think that's 20 gallons is what that'll hold. Um, so that's what the coolant comes out of. And if I, this little lever right down here, which is uh, permanently mounted, little ball valve, this controls how much flow goes to the lock lines connected to the head, which you can, you can see right in there. So I can control the amount of pressure right here. If I switch that off, shut those down, and then open this valve up, I got enough pressure in this hose. This is a three-quarter inch garden hose. Uh, I've got enough pressure in this hose from standing here at the door to uh, shoot coolant all the way out to the street. There is a lot of pressure in that system. And so I use this hose after a job is done. I wash the walls and I can actually reach in back here and cause most of the chips to uh, make their way up to the uh, up to the auger and uh, and on out they go. Okay, I've uh, basically revamped the entire cooling system. Uh, as you can see, this rubber hose right here is the drain out of the bottom of uh, the chip auger right here. That dumps into a little Walmart strainer, kitchen strainer, uh, that sits in this hole right here. and And this is the recovery tank. There's a pump in that tank, and there's a float that switches the pump on and off. 
Now you can see there's inch and a half of water or something or coolant in the bottom of that that sits there. Uh, when coolant starts flowing into that tank, that strainer of course catches any big chips that make it through. Um, once about another uh, three quarters or an inch of, water, of coolant uh, starts filling up in there, a float turns that pump on and it pumps everything out of this tank through a 5 micron filter. Let me walk around this side. And it's going to be a little dark back here, but this is uh, a 5 micron filtering system right here uh, that everything comes through there and follows this coil hose back into the main tank and this is on wheels it'll move around that's why I got the coil hose on there and so what that does is that gives me clean coolant flowing through these nozzles at the f my first system just had one tank collected everything pumped it right back out of that tank and back up into the uh, nozzles here but I was having terrible problems with uh, getting plugged up because of chips and swarf making its way back up into these lines. Now with everything being filtered, all the big stuff gets filtered out down below in the recovery tank. There's another filter around that, wrapped around that pump in that tank. And so it's pumping through that 5 micron filter into the main reservoir. Uh, holds a lot of coolant. There's no way I'm going to run out. Uh, that's about 20 gallons in the reservoir. and. Uh, even at high, high pressure, uh, this recovery system will keep up with it just fine. So it really works great. Uh, really happy with that, and uh, I haven't had a clog up uh, at all since I did that. Now this is a mess in here. Of course, I apologize uh, about that. It's not doesn't look very good for a video. But another thing you can see I've done. Um, I had actually posted a video or some pictures, anyways, of the the original uh, little pass through that I had made. I, I scrapped that uh, and I've just changed it out. I've put all my motor wiring in liquid type. Um, I had a lot of problems initially with flood coolant getting in my wiring, uh, giving me problems, my connections, etc, etc. Uh, I had a lot of problems. So I just said later with that and I put everything, all the motor wire, wiring is in liquid type. And so uh, that uh, is the XY right there. You can see up top there the, uh, the Z and that drops down and is fixed right back there on the back. And so that's uh, one of the features I've changed. Uh, another thing, and I don't know if I've showed this in any pictures yet or not, is my lubrication pump. It is right down here to my left. While I'm standing in front of this machine, all I have to do is reach right here with the doors closed uh, while the machine's running, while it's cutting. I don't have to stick my arm in there. Uh, I can lube the ways right here. Now, I, since I've mounted the doors, I realize I need to put a little spacer behind this and move it out. It's just a little tight right there. Nothing hits, but it's a little too tight for my liking. So, lubrication on this side, coolant adjustment on that side and the doors themselves. Let me back up a step. Okay, I have to step back quite a ways to let you really see the doors. Uh, they've turned out pretty nice. They're on uh, roller bearings, uh, roller guides, not drawer guides. They're a little bit different. Uh, something I just picked up off eBay. This is Lexan. Now it's a little on the thin side because I just picked it up at Home Depot. If I'd have gone to a industrial plastics. I probably could have got some heavier stuff. Of course I'd have paid a lot more for it too. But These doors turned out pretty good and uh, they glide. It's a little noisy with the traffic. I opened the garage door to get a little more light in here though. They glide nice. That squeak is because they're not adjusted. They're just basically sitting on there. That's about all I have and uh, thanks for watching. I uh, I'll put some more up when I get all this stuff completed, get this thing all nicely painted. Uh, oh, as you can see, my paint in my pan did not last. Um, it's terrible. I, I used a marine paint, but I didn't go with the, very, with the real expensive catalyzed stuff. I tried to cheap it, and uh, it's cheap. So I've got to do something else there. All right, thanks for watching.